two different lives and two different destinations. I want to talk about two different citizenship. Each and one of us, everyone in this world is going to have the choice of two citizenships of your eternal life. And that is the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be the new Jerusalem, or it's going to be the lake of fire of the living eternal life of hell. Now, I want to ask a question. Does everybody believe in heaven and hell? And don't be ashamed if you say no. That's fine. That's what we're here for. Does anybody believe, everybody believe in heaven and there's a hell? Yeah. Yes. There's a heaven and a hell, but I still have to prove it. That in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 18, it says that for the things that we see are temporal, but the things that we do not see is eternal. The things that we see right now is only like a vapor. Bible says that our life is just like a vapor. It's here for a moment, then it will be going away soon, one way or another. Yes, we all want to stay here as long as we can. We want to stay here forever. But everyone in here, I want to say most, uh, everyone in here has witnessed somebody in their family didn't die. Amen? You didn't witness this, so that lets you know that death don't have no discrimination on no one. Death can take your mama. Death can take your dad. Death can take your child. Death can take anything. When God says, come here, that means come here. Ain't nothing we can do about it. But while you're living, you got to make your choice and your destination where you want to go. Amen? Amen? Let's look at this. Hey, Jesus here told a parable about heaven and hell. And basically, you can tell he's talking in the Old Testament because he uses Abraham and then he, he names Moses. But I'm going to tell you the catch when Jesus died in resurrection, how it is today. And the reason why Jesus told this is because this is, this is what's going to happen of the day of judgment. Now, we know that we all have to die. We don't want to, but the Bible says that it's appointed once man to die and then the judgment. That means when God takes the last breath out of our bodies and we close our eyes and go into that darkness of sleep, the next time you open your eyes, you're going to be facing the Lord himself to your destination where you're going to be going. This is temporary, people. But where we're going is going to be eternal. So while we all looking at each other, we can make our choices where you want to go. Have you ever heard the saying, you make your bed, you lie in it? Everybody here is making your very own bed. I can't make your bed, and you can't make my bed. I can only make my bed where I want to lie in, amen? But let me help us out to let you know which bed you want to choose, and I hope you choose the right bed, amen? Verse 19 says, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Verse 19 says there was a certain rich man. When you see the word certain, that means that there are different types. So that means that there are different types of rich people in this world. You basically have some rich people that believe and trust in their money, but then you also have some rich people that put their money in second and put God first in their life. Now, you got to understand in this world, there's all type of certain people in this world. And we always like to point out whites and blacks. That's true, but there are certain people all around here in this world that you have to deal with. Amen? People ask the question, is being rich a sin? Because scripture in Mark the 10th chapter says that it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. Well, let's break this down. If we understood what was going on in that parable Jesus was talking about, he was talking about a young rich ruler that came to Jesus, basically telling him, I have done all of the commandments. What must I do to have eternal life? Jesus says, I tell you what, basically, sell all your possessions and follow me. The rich man chose his possessions over Christ. So when you choose your possessions over Christ, that's the certain rich man this is talking about. When you choose anything over God, this is that you are choosing to be as this rich man right here. Amen? Amen. So being rich does not mean it's being a sin. Solomon was rich. Abraham was rich. There was a lot of rich people that was in the Bible. But you know what they did? They kept God first in their lives. So you can have money, but don't let money have you. I believe first Timothy 6 chapter, I believe, uh, 10th verse, it says that the love of money is the root of all evil. A lot of people would say, 
Money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. Because there's a scripture in the book of Proverbs that says money answers for everything. But that means that you need money to make it take care of things in your life. But that don't mean to love money. When you in love with money, that is a sin because you love the money more than God. True enough, everybody in here wants money. True enough, everybody wants a little change in their pocket or extra zeros in their bank and everything. That's fine, but just don't let money have you, amen. Don't start being Scrooge McDuck. Don't start jumping into money, worshiping money. Don't start sleeping with your money and everything. It's just a tool that God blessed you with. So if you got money, be thankful. If you ain't got no money, still be thankful, amen. It says that this rich man was clothed in purple and fine linen. Purple meant, uh, um, the color purple meant something back then to where it meant three things. It meant that you was rich or you was royalty and that you had authority. And that at this time when people were purple back in the day, it showed that they had money or they was part of some type of royalty or they had some type of authority. So basically they was kind of standing out from anyone else. And just like today, if you see a soldier out here walking with his uniform on, you know he's a soldier, but if he ain't got his uniform on, you ain't think he was, but it's just that what they want to be advertised, what they had or what they got. Amen? Do people still do that today? Do people still walk around just showing, I got it like that? Yeah, people walk around and show I got it like that. You know, sometimes it's not wrong with it, but don't let that be, don't let that make you. Just be keep God first in your life. Because some people let their clothes make them. Some people let their cause make them. No, you just keep God first and stay humble in your life. Amen. Amen. It says that he basically fared sumptuously every day, meaning that he ate good every day. He lived a life of luxury every day. He lived it up to the fullest, as we say today, huh? And that nothing wrong with living life to the fullest. But he was all in himself. He was all in his self-righteousness. He was all in his pride for self. God said he resisted the proud, but give grace to the um. One thing God hates, you can see in Proverbs, the sixth chapter, is a proud look. And this man is full of pride. Verse 20. That's one man, and that's one lifestyle. Let's talk about another lifestyle. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate. Full of sores. So you had a rich man lifestyle, then you had a poor man lifestyle. Scripture says, bless the poor in spirit, that they shall see God. So it's okay to be poor in the spirit. It's okay to be poor in life. That does not make you a difference when no one else in this world. Just because you got it, and just because they ain't got it, you still treat them as the same, just like you would treat everyone else. Amen? Bible even speaks of it. A person walks in his door, basically, with raggedy clothes or whatever, you treat them just like anyone else. You treat that brother, you treat that sister just like anything else. You don't treat them different from no one else. But this rich man treat this man different. And remember what we saw, what we preached about, what goes around, comes around. How you treat people in life, it'll come back to you somewhere else like God fix it, amen? There was a certain beggar named that who was slave at his gate. He was a beggar, and he was a poor man, and he was full of sores. You know, today, sometimes when we see people like that, you kind of want to stay away from them and everything. And we know that there's so many diseases and everything that's around. But this man right here was in a particular spot in the need of help. He was laying at this rich man's gate. He wasn't on the road. He wasn't on the block. He was right here at this man's house, at his mansion at his village, at the gate. So that means when you go out, you see him every day. When you come in, you see him every day. Now, you just ask yourself that. Would you try to help a person? If they sit at your gate when you come home, you first you're going to ask, what are you doing here at my house? Well, at the day, we just know what time it is in these time of days, but at this time, you got to see if this person all right or this person needs some type of help. But the rich man ignored him. It says that, verse 21, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. The man didn't even ask for actually food because he couldn't get it when he was begging. So he was just desiring for food to fall off the table 
just to get it. Now, you know one thing about it is that when you outside eight and you got a dog, that dog is going to be somewhere close by waiting for something to drop on the ground. That's how you know if you're fighting between the dogs to get food off a table, and that's just not right. If you see somebody at your table and they're hungry, what you going to do? You're going to offer them something to eat, right? You're going to feed them. Now, let's go to this spiritual way. How about the people that need to be fed the word? Do you think God going to hold ministers, preachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles accountable if they don't feed the people? Yes. In the book, in the book of Ezekiel, God says that I will hold my shepherds accountable because they fed themselves and not the sheep. That means that if you are not here feeding the sheep, feeding the flock, the word of God, you're going to be held accountable. If they land at your gates, if they sit here in the pews hungry for the word and you're not feeding them, you're going to be held accountable. That goes for all people that preach the word of God. And you got to feed the flock. If you're going to sit there and let the sword be on them, and they sit here begging just for a little bit of crumbs of the word, and you're not feeding them, you're going to be held accountable of the day of judgment. Amen? Amen. He was desiring to be fed, and the dog slipped his sword. Verse 22 says, And it came to pass that the beggar died. It says, And it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels in Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. One thing, the wise man and the fool has in common, guess what? Both going to die. Everyone is going to die. Everyone is going to go to the place to see the judgment of Christ. Amen? It says, uh, and it came to pass. It might be days. It might be months. It may be years. But it's going to come to pass that you're going to die. It's going to come to pass that I'm going to die. It's going to come to pass and before it comes to pass, get your life right with the Lord. Amen. It said the beggar died and was carried to the angels by Abraham's bosom. I want to stop right here for a moment. Let you know that Jesus gave an illustration when you pass. There's going to be an angel that's going to escort you to the Father himself. Going to escort you to Jesus Christ. And when the Bible says to Abraham's bosom, at this time that God gave a promise to Abraham saying that you will be a father of a great nation and many nations will be up under you. Jesus was using the illustration that everyone that will be, that will die is going to be in the righteousness of the Old Testament will go into Abraham's bosom. Now, Abraham's bosom is no more. Jesus is the bosom that we're going to be into. Because if you read in Acts the 7, chapter verse 55, as Stephen was being stoned, the Bible said he was full of the Holy Ghost. And when he opened his eyes and looked up into the heavens, that he saw Jesus standing there at the right hand of side of God, letting you know that you're going to see Jesus when you die. You're going to see Jesus, and Jesus is going to make the judgment over your life, which you have did and which you did not do, that you're going to be escorted to the kingdom of heaven, or you're going to be escorted to eternal damnation of the lake of fire. Let me show you a proof, and people don't get offended by this. You see this right here? You can put this out. You can put that out all you want. But the fire in Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, verse 22, God says that there is a fire kindled in my anger that will burn to the lowest hell. Let you know that there is a lowest hell that's going to burn forever and ever. There is going to be no firefighters that's going to put that out. There's not going to be no water down there as you can see proof. That it's going to be eternal fire and burning and burning and burning. Amen? Nobody wants to go there, right? Go there. Go there. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, no. I was like, man, this will be the first one. All right, all right. All right, all right. We got it right, though. All right, we don't want to go there. You shot me on that. like, wait, wait. Hey, man, no, you can't write this place. Hey, we know what you mean. And it says that, um, in Abraham's bosom that he was buried to. But the rich man died also, and he was buried. But now you had two people, two people died, but then they just found out the destination, two different destinations they ended up at. Verse 24 says, and he said, cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Guess what? The rich man got a change of heart now, though. 
He says, listen, listen to what he said. He said, he cried. He cried and said, Father Abraham, do you know there's going to be many people that's going to say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you know where I'm going at now. It says that, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do these things in your name? Guess what Jesus is going to say? Depart from me. I never knew you. Many people are going to call on the Lord Jesus. Please save me. Please help me. But guess what? It's going to be too late because you had your time while you was here to do what was right and that you had to be obedient to his word. But now you've got to change your heart. One thing I want y'all to know, notice this is that when you die and Jesus illustrated that you're going to go to Target, guess what? You're going to remember everything. You're going to remember everything. Everything that you have done and nothing to prove. He wanted him to dip his finger in water and put it on his tongue. And he's in verse 25 says, But Abraham said, Son, what does it say? Remember that in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. You're going to remember the people that you've done wrong. You're going to remember every bit of people that you treated wrong. You cussed out people that you talked about. You're going to remember every person that you didn't kill, you didn't rob. You're going to remember everything that even when God sent his messages to you to tell you to repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. All of that is going to come to your remembrance is what you have done in your life for eternity. Let me say something. When you were incarcerated, you and you, when you're locked behind bars, you got no time but to think. You got no time but to think what you have done. What do you think about being an eternal damnation? You're going to sit there and think every time, I should have listened to him. I should have listened to her. I should have did this. I shouldn't have did this. I should have got this done. But it's going to be too late. There ain't no going back. That's why God gives you the grace of life each and every day that you need to do what you need to do to get your life straight because this was never meant since Adam and Eve said that we're supposed to stay here forever. This is only temporary, but the eternal life is going to be the kingdom of heaven or the lake of fire. So remember this. You die, you go to hell, you're going to remember everything, and it's going to be brought up against you. Now, when you remember everything going to the kingdom of heaven, no. You want me to prove it? Somebody, you can find Isaiah, the 65th chapter, verse 17. He says that I create the new heavens and the new earth, the former things you will remember no more. I said the Lord. Why would you not remember everything? Because I'm just going to be honest. What if your brother go to hell and you make it to the kingdom and you can see them? What's going to happen? Your heart is going to melt because you're going to be sad. You're going to think about these things. Your mind is going to be distracted other than now where you at and everything. That's why the Bible says you're going to be changed with the twinkle of an eye. You ain't going to remember the former things no more. But the people that's going to be in turn of damnation don't remember everything. That's why he said he looked upon and he saw Lazarus. But Lazarus didn't know him no more. Lazarus didn't know who he was. Amen. You can go to Isaiah 65 chapter verse 17 and look at that. And he says that remember these things that you've done in your life, that you received a good thing. Likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is confident and thou art tormented. The first will be last and the last shall be first. Amen. It says, and besides all this, listen to me, between us, you and us, there is a great gulf fix, so that their which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from this. Now, think about this naturally. What if you had a state penitentiary right here in the middle of the city, of a city, a big city where you couldn't get out. All you can do is see all the fun that's going on on the outside. You know what I'm saying? This is the same way Jesus is illustrating this. That might be to where a place where the people that's burning in hell can see the people that are living in the new Jerusalem, but they just can't get there because there's a great gulf in between. Many people think of a great body of water, but a gulf can be anything. It's just a separation. Yeah, you can see them here, and they can see you here, but neither one can cross over no more. Amen? There ain't going to be no construction workers there. You can't build no bridges. Jesus is the only bridge to man and God, and this is the bridge that we need to find now, because in eternal damnation of the kingdom of heaven, there's no bridges to cross over. Amen? There's no waters to swim over. Amen? You got to make your choice now. 
But we need to make it because you never know when your last day might be here on earth. Amen. Amen. It says that then he said, I pray thee, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Look at what he's thinking about now. Since he knows there ain't no chance for him to get out, he would say, well, send Lazarus to my father's house because he knows that his own house is wicked. He knows his own house is unrighteous. He knows his own house didn't have the living word of God in his house. That we know that in our household, people, everyone is accountable for their household. Everyone knows you got to bring the word of God in your household. you got to speak the word of God in your household. you got to say prayers in your household and everything. Now he said, send them to my household that they will not come here. But it's too late. Too late. It's going to be too late, people. It says, for I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Now he cares for his brothers. Why you didn't care for your brothers when he was alive? Why did you not care for your brothers and sisters to tell them to repent? Why you didn't care for your brothers and sisters when you told them, change your lives now? Now why you want to care about them? It's too late. But guess what? God got people still here. There are plenty of ministers, plenty of prophets, everything that have died in the Bible. And it's still today people preaching the word of God. Amen. So this is the same thing he said today. They dead and gone, so they got them to listen to. Amen. To the right preachers, because yes, there are many false prophets out here in this world. I have to add that in. He says, Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear him. So that means that no matter who you are, the word of God is the same. What's in here should be right here in this book as well. What's right here should be in our books as well. So the word of God stands forever. We pass and we fade away, but the word of the Lord stands forever. So he always got the word of God. Let them hear him. And he said, nay, father. He says, Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He still pleading that send somebody from the dead that they may be surprised and that they may repent. If you ain't going to want to repent now, why am I? Don't even think about it when you die. And one thing about funerals and everything, one thing that I would say, I say this out of my mouth, I can't put nobody in heaven and I can't put nobody in heaven. I can't say they up looking down at me and I can't say they down looking up at me. One thing is it, the judgment is God's judgment. Amen. So if they repent, that's between them and God. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, meaning that if you're not obeying the word of God, listening and hearing and being the doers of the word of God, what he's saying, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So basically, if you don't want to hear now, you don't want to hear from no one that's from the dead. Amen. So now, the question is, as I close this out, do we believe in heaven and hell? It's proof there's a heaven and hell. We don't know where our loved ones went. We hope they make it to the kingdom, but we don't know. One thing is about it, you got to know for yourself what choice you're going to make. Amen? Because you go witness funerals. You go see people laid in the castle. You go see people cremated. You go see these things. But not knowing that people still acting a fool here in the world. People still living their lives the way they want to be. But not knowing that you just witnessed a funeral. You just witnessed a death. Not knowing the next time can be your time. And that's where you're going to be. It's where you're going to be. Your eternal judgment lies within you and the Lord. Amen? One thing is, in Acts 2.38, to get right with the Lord, it says, repent, all of you, Jews, Gentiles, whites, blacks, I don't care who you are, it says, repent, all of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our peace that brought two into one to bring us whole to be the body of Christ. He is the head. And the only way that we can have salvation is through him. Any other way the Bible says you are like a thief and a robber. And if you are a thief and a robber and you get caught, where do you go? You get incarcerated. And now in spiritual life, you get incarcerated for eternal life. Amen. Is there anyone that would like to receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior? Baptist.